Okay, so this is going to be a base tour. Everybody loves those, right? All right, let's make sure I'm ready to go here. The oxygen topped up, battery topped up. The drinking stuff. Swap the drinking stuff. And uh, grab some chilled tomato soup. Okay, now that that's out of the way, this is my workshop. It took a while to build, actually it took a long time to get the materials needed to build it, um, but I did it exactly the way I wanted. <laughs> I, if I needed more materials, I went out and got them. I didn't spare any compromise or I didn't compromise on anything. The outer perimeter of this um, floor grating area, which is really easy to remove when you need to uh, play around like I've got with my circuit playground here, um, there's a uh, red power line that runs around the entire perimeter, so I can pull in power uh, at any time or push it out. Um, these are essentials. I have them on a different power line, but um, that's not the point of what I'm talking about. Um, it's, a, it's a fun way to set up my workshop because anything I want I can plop down. Um, I have my essential machines here all upgraded. Um, the one that spits out the cables has a box to stack them up, but eventually I, I'd like them all to have chutes leading to this central area uh, for my vending machine. But um, there's other ways I could do things later too and have that in the basement and have some other interface. It, we'll see how it goes. For now, it's fun to have a big open space compared to the tiny box that I was in before. I've got myself um, a light switch, <laughs> whoopity doo, but um, I found it proper essential when I was running out of power uh, uh, just because I was always having my, my lights running. Um, this is how I've set up my power wall. So I've got a high, high tension line coming in here um, from my power plant leading to these APCs. The lights is a separate line from the doors, which is a separate line from the machines. And this one for the doors has a larger battery. And what that would do if I ran out of power would be the lights and the machines would go off and I would notice real quickly there's something wrong. But I wouldn't be locked out of the doors and I wouldn't have to come to a panel to open it up and give it a battery because I would still have a little juice for the doors or airlocks. And of course, if anything breaks, it's going to break right here. And if so, the cable analyzer, cable analyzer for that line would read a zero um, potential. So it's all real easy um, and kind of similar to our house. Now this is my weather monitor. Um, I threw a weather station on the roof and it counts down the seconds since the last storm. And um, I have some indicators outside that are larger to see when, when you, from the side that you can't see the green light from on this side. And from everywhere when I'm outside, I can look over to the top of my base and see that green light, except um, facing um, east. And of course, inside the base. And I've got a speaker for it. Now, basement is uh, downstairs, and I've used the ogres to auger out um, a long pathway out there. I could use this for storage. I'm not sure. I'm, I'm still learning how I'm going to build this base out, but um, I've used them to gore it out, and they've placed all the goods they found in this box right here that's refrigerated. I used um, the vertical ones to gore myself out the entire base, so all the way down to bedrock, I can make as many floors as I'd like. And I've got my main base power coming from an underground shaft from my power distribution area which comes in and feeds the transformers for this base. Now let's get out of here. Get over the wall. Come on, there you go. Okay. Over to the stairs. Now, back upstairs. Go outside to the um, outer area. Now, this will be my airlock eventually. And in case the power is out, I've got a redundant APC on that middle um, white power line. So I could open this unpressurized little nook area and uh, give it a battery and turn this on if I needed power to the doors in, in case something was awry. Tried these flags out. I didn't know if it would work in a storm, if you could like see the next flag from the first flag. Um, and I also wanted to see if they'd blow away, but they didn't. So I'm going to have to clean them up. 
This is my humble little farm, but for one person, this produces enough oxygen for me. In fact, it produces too much oxygen. I actually dump it. Um, I'll show you when I get in here. Pull out the old atmospheric gadget. That's not it. There we go. Got a healthy 50% uh, oxygen. <laughs> and I didn't do that. I only bring in CO2 from outside. As a matter of fact, when I set this up, it was 100% CO2 room originally. And so it'll filter through the oxygen filters here um, when, it, when it scrubs and uh, deposit into that tank out there, which is my oxygen tank. And then I just flop the one from the base with that one um, whenever they're empty. This is my refilling station for my jetpack. I refill my jetpack with this gas because if I accidentally discharge my jetpack in here, I don't all of a sudden add some pollutants or some other gas. It's always the same gases that could be found in here. I got uh, potatoes and tomatoes. And uh, check this out. 1.63. I have not um, changed these out since they were put in. That's my first one there, and then I quickly built three more. And um, I have not changed these out since, so they've been in there for a year. Those things last forever. So you do not need to set up a full tube with waters if you don't want to. You can use these portables that are awesome. Every one of them um, will create a tomato. These were recently harvested, and I made the cans of soup that I happen to have in my cabinets now. Um, but they'll be back up to three tomatoes by the time I run out of those. So I don't need to really take them down to nothing if I don't want to. Same back here, um, tomato, the potatoes, if I took out a potato, a single potato, uh, it would be back to two potatoes before I was hungry again. <laughs> or, I mean, you know, if I did that with every one of the potatoes. Um, so there's my power distribution. Let's go outside and see the power distribution. Everybody's seen a grill room. These are boring. So, um, pretty uh, early in the game, but I had spent a long time getting the alloys I needed to make 18 of these. I had originally 18 regular solar panels, and they uh, kept getting damaged and destroyed, and I hated it. So I went ahead and grinded like a mother for the alloys I needed to make 18 of these. Um, and I say that because I did my calculations on how many materials I would need, and I end up being wrong somehow and I had to go back and make two or three times that much so I was out there in far distance with several of these uh, vertical miners um, over deposits just mining and crafting and mining <laughs> uh, and eventually coming back here to make enough of the alloys now here's my power distribution I've got a solar network set up and my IC for controlling the angles of the panels They'll be flipping back to the morning sun shortly because it's about to go down. Um, this is how I've been setting my power up, um, completely separate from each other. I've got a 25 kilowatt line running for my, my workshop and the furnace area, and um, that goes to the underground tunnel down there. And so let's head on over there to the furnace because that is what I finally was able to do now that I've got my stable power, stable food, and oxygen, and all that set up. The furnace was fun because I was able to really dive into this low-level coding for the MIPS um, on these chips, and it was a lot of fun. So here's my room. I've got displays for everything I could possibly want, all six of the gases, every pipe. I've got the cold pipe and cold tank waste pipe and waste tank and on the right the hot tank and hot pipe and they've each got thermostats i can adjust the thermostats in hundreds of kelvin hundreds of units of kelvin um even though the displays are in c <laughs> and uh and it will maintain that temperature i've got a selection display for my recipes this was fun to set up um i didn't know how to do this i I didn't really watch any instructional videos. I just saw some some um, view like uh, demos of, of some furnaces that were working in an Elmo's video or 
whatever. He had like six or eight of them set up and just sort of walking by. And I saw the different features that I have. And I thought, oh, well, that's the neatest thing ever. Put a couple buttons out there and put a monitor in the middle. And then I had to figure out how the heck that even works, how it gets it. And so I've got a, a, a hash or memory chip under the deck here. Um, that uh, of course it, it, it uh, pressing these buttons triggers it to flop between the set recipes that I have for it and of course pressing this button uh, would bring the, the furnace up to the temperature needed for that particular recipe were it on and were there gas in the pipes I don't uh, have them up yet uh, this is my evacuation handle I just pull that and it depressurizes <laughs> and sends all the gas in the furnace into the waste tank until I left that level yeah we know we know Okay, so uh, this is a fun one. This is part of the emergency systems. Um, I uh, had those set up to vent in case anything goes over pressure. The orange lines um, you can see through the clear cube here. And uh, each one of those is connected to one of these lines. And if they go over my um, emergency pressure limit, they will vent. And I also link that to a manual system that I can select any individual tank or all three of them and um, press this important button here and the thing will close up and lock up and light up and um, start uh, pressurizing the tanks that I want until they're absolute zero. Um, and uh, I can change it midstream too if I accidentally press that button and lock the whole system into a purge cycle. Um, I can interrupt it and or, uh, change it up to make them whatever tanks I want and it'll just work on those um, on the fly. Now, uh, I just did that with the, the cold tank, and it worked. I was really happy. I loved it. That was great. <laughs> uh, I didn't have any issues in the code, but it was also a particularly simple bit of code. Some of the other ones is where I had some issues where I didn't think correctly on a greater than or less than or equal to sort of, uh, you know, line by line coding. Um, so that was uh, fun. Now, this is what controls it all, these chips. Now, before I get into those, I'm going to go outside and show off what they're all about. All those chips are connected to all the crap out here for the most part. There's a cold tank, a waste tank, and a hot tank, just like any furnace. And um, like uh, the demo video I saw, he said something about um, one setup was pretty efficient because it used the waste gas um, as well as the hot and cold. And so I figured, oh, that is smart because the hot gas is hard to get. If you have waste gas that's hotter than your furnace is, and you've got your furnace in a in a in a state where it's um, wanting to heat itself up using one of these gases, it can choose to use this purple waste gas to fill itself up with hot gas until this is no longer hotter than itself. If it's not at that degree, in which case it would switch over to a hotter gas here. So um, it's a good way to recycle this hot gas that we're using before it leads out of these pumps in and fills up these tanks to my request level. Now this is also fun. Each side has a radiator and a heater and these can maintain uh, the temperature within 50 degrees or something like that or 100 Kelvin, 100 units Kelvin, I can't remember what I set it to but the point being is um, I can keep them exactly as I want with those little thermostat dials in there. Um, I don't have to worry about it getting too cold or too hot or out of margin um, and uh, they work great. This, uh, I thought I might have to put more than one radiator uh, or something like that. You just open this valve with the one radiator and it starts dropping real fast. Now it's a lot harder to put energy into it, of course. These little pipe heaters here take a thousand watts and they're very slow. If you wanted any kind of speed, you'd want several of them and you'd quickly run into a situation where you wouldn't be able to use these little tiny cables. You'd have to run, well, you'd have to either run some kind of uh, series or something where you, or you have to run up to the heavy cables and put some serious power through. Um, but uh, this is just perfect for what I need. This is a vacuum cube with composite glass. I'm going to eventually put some stellite glass in these armored outers um, just for looks and see what it looks like. Um, and a uh, little mix central there. So inside, uh, those emergency uh, controls are set to these vents here, and I might have to make them taller. Uh, I'm not sure yet. <laughs> if you come back and look at the structure, that's still kind of venting very hot gas near a bunch of things, and if I brought them way, way, way high up, it would have a chance to disperse before getting down there. So uh, I'm going to be doing some tests just for the heck of it, even if I have to reload a save after blowing something up. 
um, just to see uh, what 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 I need to do because I don't know the game so well. I've never set up a furnace like this before. I've never watched any instructional videos. I'm not using anybody else's coding, so I don't know if what I've written will work, but it it should. So uh, let's go in there and take a look at that stuff now. To control all of those um, those orange pipes. I've color-coded everything pretty much. Uh, the orange emergency evacuation and manual evacuation uh, is controlled by this chip. My furnace is yellow and it's controlled by this uh, chip here. My furnace recipes, uh, mainly this green button and the things uh, that uh, are set when you press the green button, and my hot tank, my waste tank, and my cold tank. Take a look at uh, one that is particularly cool is my emergencies. Oops, that wasn't the selected one. Did you import that you did? Okay. So, um, with my emergencies, I had extra lines of code left. Um, some of these are so long, they only fit so many lines and it, I can only shorten it so much and optimize it so much if I wanted to do anything else I have to remove something or have, find a smarter way to um, order the logic and so this one had plenty of lines so I was able to add in a lot of fun extras and what I'm able to do here is check the quantity of this room based on the hash of my occupancy sensor and so it's always keeping track of how many people are in this room and it's also keeping an eye on the door and whether the door is open. So if I open this door, I can let it cool off in here, like I'm doing right now, to below zero. Uh, in the bottom right screen near my face, you can see the temperature going down to negative 17, negative 20 now, and lowering to the um, very cold outs outside temperature. Oops, it closed on me. Okay, so the point being, I can lower the temperature like this, and once it's night very far below zero, which it is outside in here now, and close to what it is outside, I can trap that and keep it nice and cool in here without any kind of airlock, really. And what I'm gonna do is go outside and that logic in my emergency chip sees that their occupancy has changed and the door is open and it closes it right behind me. As soon as I come in, it does the same thing. And so it's not an airlock, but it'll help kind of keep it below zero. Um, which will help me play with ices if I ever want to throw some ice in here or deal with anything uh, as I'm learning how to work with this furnace and learning about these gas and uh, fuel ratios in here. Um, I don't have any filters of purification here, so this is all going to be kind of uh, semi-automatic by the, um, you know, shooting from the hip here and learning how it all works. And so um, I can have a cold room. <laughs> it's kind of, I don't know, it's fun to be able to do these things. Um, it's fun to be able to put things like emergency gear and uh, you've got your fire extinguishers real easy to get to. I've got some overhead space here. This is all the spray paints I used, but I'll empty that out so I've got some storage and crap that I might want, you know, like out here if I need to pull something out of my inventory or throw some ores down or anything I need to do. It's all there for me. This was a particularly long task to set up. Um, also, because I had to learn um, this uh, NIPS coding, it was something that, that really pushed my understanding of how to do this kind of stuff. Um, whereas one that was a little bit challenging uh, was it the uh, furnace control itself. Let's go ahead and import that. I thought I had, would have some fun and make it simple to set the recipe by reading memory. So I've got the memory on the ground that is um, being set for the recipe over there, but I threw down a second memory. It's basically a carbon copy of the first, but whenever I press that little green button over there, one of the memories gets set to a zero for just a second, just long enough for them to not be equal, and for this script here to isolate that one value which is equal to all these jumps down here. So every jump, every um, branch that I've got here is named for the hash of the alloy itself. And I thought, oh, that's a fun way to kind of, you know, eliminate rather than putting down like the name of the in, you know, invar jump and if it's equal to this, I mean, the double the amount of, of code that would take and the lines it would take um, for something that just barely fits into 128 lines with 
you know, just some real modest breakups in the visual flow. Uh, just one or two or three little breaks to, to, to kind of break it up. Other than that, I'm pretty much occupying every space. You know, I could obviously get rid of a comment line like this if I really had to cram something in there, but I can't do much more with a script this long. I can't add any more checks for this, that, or the other thing unless I make one of these bits of logic shorter or I figure out a better way to do it. And this, this is kind of the extent of my smarts. I'm not much more code prowess than this <laughs> uh, I didn't follow any guides or anybody's examples I just figured this is probably how somebody would do it if they wanted it to do it like this um, obviously there's some preference in operators you could do a greater than or a less than compare when you when you would get the same value either way but um, I don't know what preferences are there and I don't know standards either um, I, I put some, you know, some indentation of a couple spaces just for my brain uh, on some of these, so when I'm looking at them, I can remember. Okay, this is, yeah, this is inside the recipe loop, and this is still inside the start loop when they get so large that I can't see the front or the um, behind of it. So this was uh, something else to set something up like this, and truly, I haven't even seen if it works yet. <laughs> um, so that's what I get to do now. I get to test the emergency systems first. I'm going to lower the, the maximum pressure variable and fill up some pressure in them and see that they vent on their own like they're supposed to um, when they're over that limit. And then I'm going to fill them up with a lot of pressure until they would go over pressure and see that it can tolerate uh, ex you know, expelling that kind of hot gas without catching fire to the entire rear of this facility. And if so, I'm going to take those pipes and send them into the heavens uh, nearly as high as I can, and we'll see if that does any better. Well, that's all I got for now, so this base tour is coming to an end. If you stuck around this far, thanks for watching, and I'll make another video sometime soon. See you later!